Hey guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do an RNAV approach in the G1172 in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find the approach plates for the airport you're going to be landing at. Uh, a great website I found is flightplan.com. Uh, I'll link it in the description below. And what you're going to do here is you're going to go to the airport slash FBO info right here and then you're going to enter the airport ID you're going to be landing at. I'm going to be doing CYQT. And then you're going to scroll down to the approaches here and click the drop down menu and you're going to select the approach you're going to be doing. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the RNAV for runway 25 and it's going to be the GNSS one because I'm going to be using the GPS. Click on that, and then you get the approach plate here. Basically, this is going to tell you what you're going to put into your GPS, as well as the altitudes that you're going to be using for the approach. So I'm going to be coming in from the south over here. I'm going to be taking off at a little airport over here, and then I'll fly out and pretend I'm coming in from the south. So this is going to be the transition that you're going to put into the GPS. These here are going to be the waypoints that you're going to see on the GPS once you activate the approach. And you have the name of the approach right here, which you're going to put into the GPS. And you have your safe altitude from 100 nautical miles away from the center of the airport. So that altitude is what I'm going to be flying at when I'm coming in for this approach. Until I get over here to Canav. When I get to Canav and I'm within one nautical mile on either side of this track right here, I'll be able to descend down to 2000 and I'll want to be at 2000 once I reach B-Rob right here and then I'm going to want to be at 1340 when I get to VEPV right here and then once I get down to 1060 feet right here I'm going to look out the window, I'm going to see if I can see the runway, I'm going to continue the approach. If I can't see the runway, then I'm going to level off at 1060. And then when I get to the threshold of the runway right here, then I'm going to do a missed approach if I still can't see the runway. And then this is the procedure for the missed approach. So I would climb to 4000 feet, tracking 254, to Fesset, which is this right here, which you'll be able to see on the GPS. Okay, so let's jump into flight simulator now and I'll uh, show you guys how to do this so I'm here in flight simulator now and I'm at that little airport just beside the airport I'm going to be landing at and I am going to show you how to set up the GPS and then I'm going to get up into the air fly out and then I'll actually set up the GPS once I'm up there so what you're going to do is you're going to go to the set direct course this little D with the air going through it and you're going to put in the airport if it's not already in there, it should already be in, be in there if you set the flight plan uh, in the flight sim menu, but I didn't. Enter, activate, and that'll set a direct route over to uh, Thunder Bay. Now I'm going to have the approach plate pulled up on my phone, but I will put a screenshot of it up in the video and I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to procedures. This is once I'm once I'm uh, close enough to the airport, we're going to go to procedures, select approach. So in the name of the top of the approach plate, we had RNAV GNSS runway 25 Zulu. So we're going to select this and RNAV 25 Zulu right there. So I'm going to hit enter on that. And then if you want to get the cursor back up, click this button and then we're going to scroll down transition so on the approach plate we had Ebkill as our transition because we're coming in from the south if I was coming in from the north I would probably use Gabber and to do that I would just select this and then I can just scroll and select the one I want to use and then you're going to go down to the bottom and you're going to check these waypoints are correct with the approach plate. So we have Ebkill, and then we have Canav, then we have Burob, Vetvi, 
and runway 25. So that looks good. So we're going to go here and we're going to hit activate. And then we'll draw a line from the airplane to the first waypoint, which is Ebkill. You see it pop up right there. Uh, I'm just going to clear that. I'm going to take off, fly out to the south, and I'll do it again once I'm up in the air. And I'll see you guys then. Okay, so I've flown, flown quite a bit out to the south now. So I'm going to put YQT here in my GPS. Activate. And you can see here I'm 14.8 nautical miles away from the center of the airport. So we are safe to descend down to 3,400 feet at 3,500. We'll just stay here. And I'm going to put in the approach and activate it. So once again, I'm going to go to procedures, select approach, select the approach that you're doing based on your approach plate, uh, select the transition, make sure it's correct, activate, and you can see there's the line. So I have autopilot right now on, I'm just going to use the heading bug to spin it around. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow this pink line pretty much all the way in and we're going to reference the approach plate to figure out what altitude we want to be at. And you can see the airport just over here just by those lights. And we're right about, right about here on the approach plate and we're flying northeast to intercept Epkill right there see that at the top of the PFD here, going towards Ebkill is the distance, and here's the track you would have to fly to go direct to Ebkill, but we're going to re-intercept our track here. Uh, another tip with the G1000s, if you go to a PFD there on the bottom, select wind, you can select these options, I like option 3 the most, and that'll show you the winds right where you are, which is useful for selecting runways if they don't have a uh, ATIS or you don't know the winds, it's really useful to have out there. Now if you look at the approach plate in the bottom left corner right over here, it shows you what descent rate you would need at each speed to go on the, uh, to follow the glide slope, which in this case is 3.1 degrees. Say for example I was going 110 knots, I would need to descend at 600 feet per minute to follow the glide slope down from the starting point. That's another useful tip to know if you don't want to, if you don't want to descend down to each altitude and level off until you get to the waypoint. Uh, another tip, if you don't want to set headings to follow your track when you're in autopilot mode, you can just select nav right here, turn nav mode on with your autopilot on and it will just follow the big climb for you instead of you having to set headings. And you can see now we're getting pretty close to the transition waypoint. We're about 8 miles away so I'm going to descend down to 3,400 and that way I can be at 3,400 once I get to Ebkill. And if you look here on the approach plate, it starts at 3,400. So you can see here on the GPS, these are the waypoints, Ebkill, that's Kanev, B-Rob, right there, uh, that's Fepvi, and then there's the airport, and you can see it's going to take us up and around here, and if you look on the approach plate, it's the exact same, it goes up here to Kanev, and then straight through there, so we just have to follow that, and then check the altitudes on the approach plate and follow those altitudes. Okay, so now we've hit Ebkill here in our transition, and the plane is turning to follow the track over to Canav. And at Canav, we want to be at 3,400 feet, as you can see on the approach plate right here. Uh, once we get to Canav and we turn, and we're within one mile on either side of the track, we will be able to descend down to 2,000 feet here as you can see on the approach plate. 
So we're 3.4 miles away from Canav right now, 3,400 feet. So everything checks out right now. Now I'm actually going to take over by hand, take off the autopilot. I have a really sensitive joystick and I've tried everything in the settings menu and I cannot get it to feel like the real plane, but it is what it is. And you'll actually know if you're one mile on either side of the track from here. This little needle right here, so uh, if it's moved all the way over to the side, that means you're a mile or more off track. So if it is, if it is in between these dots, then you are within a mile of track, which means you are able to descend down to the altitude for that section of the approach. Anywhere about 0.8 miles away from, yeah, 0.8 miles away from Canada, so I'm going to start a slight turn. And you'll be able to see the waypoint switch in about a second. There it is. Start a sharp return here. And we want to keep that pink needle in the middle centered with the rest of the arrow. And you can see the runway there now. Luckily today it's nice and clear. at 1,000 feet here to remind me to look up to uh, see if I can see the runway, which I can, so I don't really need that set, but it's good practice. And we are within one mile of track, so we can descend down to 2,000 feet. And we want to be at 2,000 feet once we reach Erob right here in four, 400 miles. And if we look at the chart, going 110 knots, so we need 600 feet per minute. So there's around 600 feet per minute. About two miles away from B-Rob, 2,800. Uh, we should be pretty close to 2,000 feet once we get there. And then if we look at the approach plate, when we get to VETV, we want to be at 1,340. So we'll keep trying to get 2,000 B-Rob, and then once we pass B-Rob, we'll try to get down to 1,340. Uh, if you don't get down to 2,000, if I don't get down to 2,000 by B-Rob, it's fine, as long as I'm not below 2,000. Uh, if I'm still a little bit above, then I can slightly increase the descent rate. But as long as I am above 2,000 feet at B-Rub, it should be fine. And I'm just about to cross B-Rub, right around 2,000 feet. And you can see that V is now up on the Jeep, or up on the PFD as the next waypoint, 1.8 miles away. We want to get down to 1,340 by then. Uh, below 110 knots, we can drop 10 degrees of flaps. And we are a little bit high, but it's better than being too low. We have to be above 1,340 feet getting to that fee anyways.
and there's 1,400 still I'm actually just 0.2 miles away from that V now so there's 1,340 and we're just passing that V so we are able to descend now to our next altitude which is 1060 which is when we'll look up and decide whether or not we will do the landing based on whether we can see the runway or not. And there's 1,060 feet. Look up, we can see the runway, so we're going to continue with the approach. And we're below 85 knots, so we can drop 20 degrees of flaps. Bit of a crosswind from the right. I don't have a rotor pedal, so I can't do crosswind inputs, so I'm just going to have to come in grabbed. And short final, we'll lower the flaps to 30 degrees, and get the speed to 61 knots. And we're going to aim for our aiming point. Over top of the aiming point, we can cut the power and start the flare. And there we are. And once again, I don't have rudder pedals, so I have to use buttons as rudders. <laughs> And taxi off. And that's all there is to it. It's uh, not very hard once you get the hang of it. Um, just uh, managing your altitudes and pretty much just setting the right thing up in the GPS. And that's, that's really all there is to it. Uh, well, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any suggestions for another flight sim tutorial, please put it down in the comments and I'll try my best to make it.